Hi all, welcome to the channel. Today we will be learning about how to use ServiceNow package in A360. So with that let's get started. So this package, why this package was introduced? Uh, when there are when there are rest api packages to query service now basically this package was introduced to perform several actions which are related to records and attachment type of components in service now okay for rest of the actions you can use rest apis so to perform these actions internally a360 uses table api and attachment api of service now in the right hand side you can see the list of detailed available actions under attachments authentication and records so these are the actions that we will be covering as part of this session there are a few prerequisites so your bot creator must have access to the ServiceNow account with the required permissions then you have to follow the guidelines the ServiceNow guidelines for uh, establishing a connection right for configuring your OAuth mechanism using which the authentication takes place so it's precisely OAuth 2.0 then you must have a developer account with a developer instance ready in service now if you need a detailed video on covering these prerequisites how to set up this environment before using the a360 packet then you can comment down below this video and i'll create a separate video if i would have included that included all these things in this video then it will be very lengthy video and the focus of this video is just to let you know how you can use a360 package with the list of available actions and not setting up your dev environment or setting up all the prerequisites you can create read update and delete record from a service now table attach download or delete attachments from service now records trigger specific automations so for instance when your new incident is created or a new or an incident existing already existing incident is updated and then you can streamline the responses enough of talking let's do some hands-on so let me go to the control room so here as you can see i have a bot ready for you to demonstrate so there are different different steps for uh, for which i have included uh, the examples okay so let me pull up the service now package and as you can see in service now package we have different section of actions available under attachment we have three under authentication we have two and the rest of them are for under records first first and foremost thing if you want to do anything with service now objects for example table or a record right we first need to authenticate for authentication what we're going to use we're going to use authentication action and revoke authentication just to revoke the authentication so i have used here authentication action and at the last in the finally finally error handler finally action i have used or uh, i have just revoked the authentication so how to authenticate so here there are two types of authentication oauth2 client credential and control room authentication for now we for here for this example we are using oauth2 and we have set set up the oauth2 mechanism in service now okay and here we are providing the service now url which is the which is my dev instance of service now you can easily create this we need to pass client id client secret username and password all these parameters we need to pass in order to authenticate with service now and then the session name this is all about authenticating your uh, control room or your bot with service now the next step is to create a record so these two actions are clear now authentication and revoke authentication now we will jump on to creating a record and then we'll move to attach for creating a record let me enable this and add a breakpoint over here so that we just run until this section okay and let me just enable this what it will do is it will create a record and pass back record id to us so here it expects a table name so let me go to service now in service now table there are different types of uh, objects so we are dealing with table api so we need a table object here so this incident is a table object if i go back here so if you see here uh, we are viewing a table object which is named incident let me go back here and here you can see all the available tables all the available table object in your service now so this view i am seeing because i am in, i'm logged in with the admin user that's why i am seeing the entire um, options 
if you want to query another table you can you can uh, this is the this is the list of all the available table objects like 2701 table objects exist so i have picked this incident of incident okay i have picked this in, uh, table named incident and let me go back to the code so this is the table name and this is the session name i have authenticated to and i'm capturing record id so let me run this bot and as soon as the message box is displayed we will stop the bot so you can see here bot is downloading the dependencies and it's ready to run so now you can see record created and this is the record id so let me capture this record id and have it in a notepad so this is a record id and one new record is created let me stop the bot now and close this so this record creation part is done so this is how you create a new record under this table or under any table so let me disable this action now it's not needed we just wanted to demonstrate the create record action here now we will similarly go to get record so the the latest record which we created right so we will pass the record id here and we'll see if that is getting pulled or not the details are getting pulled or not for this particular record id so let me paste that record id here and now i have disabled all this i'll disable this as well and let me uh, run this so while running this i will just place a breakpoint over here and let me run this in a debug mode so bot is running now in a debug mode and here we go the list of available variables let me run it through and here we go so it is now getting a record it is fetching a record with the provided record id and let me move us one step ahead and now we can see here d record it's a dictionary variable which should have all the details of this record id so you remember here you remember here right we have assigned the output in a dictionary variable named d record so if you see here in the variable you get all the values of that record so let me stop this now so that's the use of uh, this command service now get record so it fetches a record based on record id let me disable this now and now let's go to similarly you can we can update a record update the existing record by providing the sys id which is a record id and we can also delete a record so while deleting a record also the unique id is sys id which is record id so i'm not demonstrating these two methods because this is pretty plain pretty simple to use let's go back to attachments so in attachments uh, let's add an attachment and then fetch that attachment and then delete that attachment okay so uh, this is my uh, variable there is existing record in the table name incident and that record on that record we will attach one file let's say 10 easiest section in a360 uh, let's attach this file over there and we will name the new file with this name and we will store the attachment id over here and then let's display the attachment id so that we get notified whether the file was uploaded or not okay so let me save this so here i have specified the a uh, file which is a uh, already uploaded in the control room you can go with desktop file as well so let's try to run the bot until this message box okay so with this a file should be uploaded okay using this okay. and in here we go the file is uploaded and this is the attachment id we'll copy this and paste it in the notepad it will be handy for us attachment id and let me stop the bot now if you want to get the attachment so we need the attachment id over here okay so let me pass on this newly created attachment id and i have given the c temp folder as my destination folder the, the file which we uploaded right that file uh, based on this attachment id it will be fetched and it will be stored at this location on my local drive let's see that 
So for now, I will disable this. We don't need to add any more attachment and I need to enable this. So get attachment is what we need, we are looking for. And I'll just check if everything is, uh, I just need to run the step and uh, maybe I will place a message box after this just to stop the bot. Okay. Um, temporary message box for stopping stop the bot okay let me run this and now we are just checking whether the bot is able to fetch the attachment the bot is running now and sys id cannot be blank so there's something we missed let me stop the bot so this is the error handling that's why we are getting that message from this cat statement okay and here uh, okay i missed to update the attachment id so let me run this again the bot should run fine now and we should get the message stop the bot okay let's stop the bot and go to this drive c drive and see here this is the pdf file that is a uh, download it we, we had uploaded an attachment with this name right remember at the step number nine at the line number nine we had added an attachment and now we are able to download that attachment to our local drive if you open that file let me open that file so that you guys can see this is a pdf that was attached already okay let me close it so we have also tested this or we have also demonstrated how to get an attachment so let me stop uh, let me move this message here and now we are going to delete the attachment so I'll copy the same attachment ID and I want to delete that so it's as, as simple as just deleting it so I will I'm not going to demonstrate that but because if you keep the session name and the attachment ID valid one then it will definitely go ahead and delete it so let it be I will just disable this as well for now now we have covered the attachments all the attachment actions we have covered authentication section uh, uh, actions and in record section we have create uh, we have covered how to create a record using this similarly for updating a record and deleting a record it remains same so as you can see here how if you have if you have to delete a record you just need to pass a record id and the table name similarly for updating a record you need to pass table name and record id okay so the what we are going to demonstrate now is get multiple records so get record is also fine you can get a record based on the record id now we are more focused on getting multiple records so it retrieves multiple records so in get record what we got is a dictionary of 92 attributes or 92 parameters so now in multiple records there will be those 92 parameters for multiple set of records okay so here uh, get multiple records is this fetching multiple records so based on this table okay this is the table and whatever records exist in this table in named incident everything will be fetched and stored in a list variable and that list variable we are querying over here so now let me run the bot in debug mode okay so that uh, you guys can see the values while the bot is running so we are demonstrating the fetching of multiple records okay get multiple records let me step over so now we are we are fetching the multiple records okay so multiple records are fetched now let me view the list incident so we multiple records are fetched and we have stored them in this variable list incident so let me see that so we have 70 such records under table incident so those 70 records are fetched and those 70 each of them has 92 parameters that we had already seen okay so this is how the multiple records are fetched let me run this a uh, few parameters of the record so these are not mapped properly so that's why we are getting null values however this is how we are getting we are getting or we are fetching the multiple records so there's some issue with the data type in while retrieving the list okay these are some uh, 
minimal kind of errors which can be rectified but the intention of uh, running this bot was to show you how to fetch multiple records from a table so in service now you can either fetch one record at a time or you can fetch multiple records and that's what we did from the table named incident so whatever records you fetch will be stored in a list variable and then you can query that list variable or you can loop that list variable to retrieve the information that is of your interest in this error handler finally we have revoked um, the access or uh, revoked the access for authentication and that's all regarding the service now package guys hope you have liked this video in case you do then please share with your friends colleagues and do subscribe to uh, to this channel thanks for watching please do comment if you need any other help regarding this video if you need to know the prerequisites i'll create a separate video on it thanks for watching